take a look at some of the other cards in Steve Jackson's card game. This card game, whose final goal is world domination, was created by an admitted magician named Steve Jackson. In 1990, Steve Jackson's company was raided by the Secret Service, and three years later, he would create a website hosting company called Illuminati Online. In 1995, the card game was released, and later in 1999, George Bush's presidential campaign website was hosted by Steve Jackson's Illuminati Online. The game has hundreds of cards like this, and now that you have a taste of what those other cards must look like, ask yourself why Steve Jackson has a card for every person, method, technology, and organization the Illuminati have ever used, letting it all hang out with pyramids, all-seeing eyes, and 666 everywhere. And yet, this card means seemingly nothing, and yet claims to show one of their cabal's most deepest secrets. That's because it does, my friend. So much so that even in Steve Jackson's shameless card game, he remains vague, so that only those who should know the card's meaning, do know the card's meaning. Most of us are familiar with the theme of a devilish version of oneself sitting on one shoulder, while their angelic copy sitting on the other. But there's a thread of truth to this. Each person is assigned both a demon counterpart and an angelic counterpart. The demon counterpart whispers dark thoughts into the mind, encouraging it to do evil, while the angelic counterpart, or guardian angel, encourages you to do righteous things and protects you from things unseen. This transformation of the body involves the merger of yourself, your demonic, and your angelic counterpart into a single body. In previous documentaries like Hollywood Insider's Full Disclosure, I've accused George Lucas of not only taking characters from religions and mythology, but also of having reversed the heroes and villains. A documentary called The Illuminati, for instance, had a clip of Jordan Maxwell claiming that Freemasons actually believe in a character called Yoda and receive guidance from him. Unfortunately, and as usual, Maxwell failed to report where he got this information. He also claimed that the quote-unquote reference works he was citing from could be found in any library, which is absolutely false. Still, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Then you have Darth Vader, who I claimed was actually Jesus Christ. Among the many parallels between the life of Darth Vader and Jesus were, he was immaculately conceived, storms a temple, declared the chosen one, and then rejected, becomes the leader of a large army, among many more. I also spoke about Chewbacca, actually being al Jassassa, who is a hairy beast that, according to Islam, is friends with the Antichrist. Further, I accused Han Solo of being that Antichrist. No time to explain. And now, we can add Jedi to the pile. The book The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom, just like George Lucas, also claims that Jesus Christ was a Jedi. But don't listen to me. Here's George Lucas telling you where he gets his stories from. I kind of notice in The Phantom Menace, the new episode one, that uh, they discover this slave child who has a, an aura about him. And it reminded me of uh, how the Buddhists go out to look for the next Dalai Lama. Mm hmm well, there's, a, again, a mixture of all kinds of, of uh, mythology and religious beliefs that have been amalgamated into the movie. I didn't want to invent a religion. I wanted to try to explain in a different way the religions that have already existed. You're creating a new myth. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm telling an old myth in a new way. I'm telling an old myth in a new way. I'm telling an old myth in a new way. I'm telling an old myth There are three main types of spirits, angels, demons, and elementals. Angels, like demons and elementals, can be conjured, invoked, and communicated with. Angels are mostly benevolent and are sometimes unwilling to execute evil commands because they, like all spirits, prefer doing tasks that are similar to their personality. Most, but not all, demons are spirits trapped in a bottomless pit while other demons are free roaming and take pleasure in being sent off to do evil. Elementals are spirits who are neither exclusively bad or exclusively good and roam the earth freely. They too can be conjured and instructed to complete certain tasks. Almost all spirits, with maybe the exception of elementals, exist in a strict hierarchy. One must also be careful to never assign a spirit to do what is outside of their power or intellect. Spirits, like us, also have gender. Spirits view the earth as a three-dimensional living environment. 
Multitudes of spirits live in the sky, the ocean, underground, and even among us in our own homes. Most spirits insist on living in deserted places where no humans walk. Regardless of their type, spirits, like humans, have their own personality. Some are pleasant, while others are forever hostile to each other and mankind. Even spirits with extremely low intelligence may be capable of remembering all that they have ever seen in their hundreds, if not thousands of years. The demons have been placed in servitude, and the chains of this servitude are the very symbols and procedures that we call magic. The symbols and procedures are complicated, and they have to be. Every day, people mindlessly doodle symbols while chatting on the phone or sitting in class. Every day, words are rearranged in endless combinations forming sentences never said before. Luckily, and quite deliberately, the conjuring of a spirit or the casting of a spell has been placed far beyond the realms of the accidental. The arbitrary nature of magic's proceedings is to ensure that it was an act of free will, and nothing less. Each demon has a specific symbol associated with it, and further, there are some symbols that can injure a demon, and other symbols and charms that demons can sense nearby even if they are concealed. All magic books have a section on banishments of spirits, or what is often called the license to depart. The word demon has been a bit overused throughout the years. Demon is a blanket term we have given all malevolent, intelligent beings regardless of their form. When a spirit inhabits and possesses a person, we call it a demon. When we witness a ghastly creature with red, glowing eyes, for instance, we call it a demon. But demons come in shades of gray, some more material than others. Sometimes demons are often described as soul travelers, spoke of as if their motionless material body lies idle in some far distant place while their astral projection roams free among us, causing illness, strife, and feeding off the life force that humans emit when experiencing intense emotions like fear, lust, and anger. These very same emotions also open a portal to the mind where the demon's whispering can become even more influential. Being in a dream state or intoxicated may also help to open this mind gate. Some demons can only feed on anger and consequently will incite fights and cause bad dreams to induce fear. Other demons feed off of lust and will whisper lustful thoughts and even descend upon sleeping victims to cause wet dreams. Sometimes, when babies cry endlessly for no reason, they are being tormented by a demon. And even cats, who magicians have long used as spirit detectors, can sense beings the human eye cannot. Demons, like all creatures, prefer doing deeds that are agreeable to their personality. So naturally, the demons delight in being sent off to do dirty jobs. Vague commands leave room for a demon's natural mischief, so your orders must be specific. Your commands must include intent with a limited target and time frame. Demons exist within a strict hierarchy, and often, when you assign one demon to do a certain task, he may in fact hand that assignment to one of his subordinates. Many Christians and Muslims believe that there are only three main characters who play a part in the end times, Satan, Christ, and the Antichrist. But the truth is that there are much more entities involved here. Even though Satanists use terminology from almost all known religions, the names of the highest ranking demons are for the most part universal. Names like Satan, Moloch, Lucifer, Baal, Belial, Samael, Lilith, Leviathan, Azazel, Tiamat, Set, Ashtaroth, Belzebub, and Asmodeus. Muslims and magicians consider King Solomon of Israel to have been one of the most powerful magicians ever. Solomon was said to have power over all the demons and spirits of the earth. It is said that King Solomon could, through the power of God, force any demon to do anything he wanted. Further, magicians, Muslims, and even apocryphal texts, like the Testament of Solomon, claim that many of the builders of Solomon's temple were in fact demons. The Freemasons have long